Hey, y'all. Bob. Bob Lee here. I have some road dates I want to talk to you guys about. I want to be at the Oxnard Levity Live October 11th. This weekend. This weekend. Ooh. 12th, 13th as well. Please come. Mm -hmm. October 18th, I'm at the San Antonio, Texas Laugh Out Loud. November 1st, I'm at the Arlington, Virginia Draft House. Mm. All those weekends, the whole weekend dates, yeah. Yeah. My birthday weekend, you're in Arlington. Okay. But just, okay, we'll let that go. <laughs> um, November 4th, 14th, we have 15th and 16th. I'm going to be at the Cleveland, Ohio. Hilarity is one of my favorite clubs of all time. The 22nd of November, Brea Improv, Joe Coy's Club. <laughs> you're performing say, at the Joy Say Coy? it. Well, I'm performing at Joe Coy's Club. <sighs> December 12th, 13th, and 14th, San Francisco Punchline. Oh. That's like your club. That's my club. That's your club. And on the 21st, December, Calusa. Calusa. Ooh. The casino. Yeah, it's great. I might oh, come check it out. Can I go to Cleveland with you? Yeah, please. I, I was going to say, can I come to San Francisco? I might go to that one. Oh, yeah. Get some food. Anyways, guys, make sure you check out all those tickets at BobbyLeeLive.com. Enjoy the intro song. Oh, I made so much to talk about. Number one, so much. Number one to talk about is uh, the Joker. Did you like it, George? Nope. He didn't like it. I, know. I don't know if uh, for real. I know you didn't like it. Ooh. Why? I'm not, I know that's not a popular. Why? 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 He's a he's a Columbia you know he he's a Columbia earlier? director. He doesn't. Why? Like why? That. Why? What he said earlier? What would you it's say? It's not the Hangover. <laughs> oh, that's what you said. That that's yeah. pretty funny though. It's not the Hangover. Yeah, it's not because of, number one, Joker's not a fucking comedy. You fuck not. You were you dumb? Oh shit. Yeah, two different genres, right? Oh. Okay, let's. I don't want to. Let's not be positive vibes. Let's be positive about it. I'm, you know what? Your your opinions are so valid, dude. You're, you know, when you talk, everyone should listen, right? So speak your mind. Tell us about the Joker. Everyone listen. It's Taxi Driver, but without the fun. Yeah. But you knew that going into it. Right? No, no, I didn't know. I oh, didn't know. It so was we... a Joker movie. It was like no, 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 no. I, I didn't, I didn't watch any trailers. <laughs> I didn't watch anything because I wanted to go in clean because I heard it was the movie of the year. All I knew, movie of the year. Yeah. And then I was like, where's the fun part? What do you mean the fun part? Where's the enjoyment of watching cinema? I was transfixed. I couldn't okay. get my eyes off of him. Great word. You're just gonna, what? You're just staring. You're not. His opinions. No, are what, valid. I, what I'm. What I. You know. I. I think. I think that when Travis Bickle, that character, taxi driver, it. If you read some of the articles back in the day, the same thing. You know what's the point? It's pointless. He's. You know, a nihilist. You know, whatever the whatever the critique was, but um, but at the end of the day, through time, people look back on that movie and they go, "It's just one of the best movies, but an anti-hero ever made." Right? So, um, and there, even though he was really extreme, there are parts of myself that I found in him. Yeah, there, I think there are parts of all of us that you see and. Parts of feeling desperate, parts of feeling like you're no one's on your side and going into that deep spiral. Not quite like him, but, you know, feeling feeling that doom. Yeah. And feeling like, fuck it. I'll paint my face and fuck shit up, you Why know? Why does Bobby have a Joker smile? Oh, he's been dancing like the Joker all weekend. <laughs> okay, that's not creepy at all. In fact, I think that might be his new... Um, what, what, Alter ego. What would be your thoughts if you just went to the new house, you opened the master bathroom, and Bobby's face is covered in paint, and he's just dancing? I'd probably be into it in like a <laughs> sick way. I'd probably have a baby with him. In that moment? <laughs> <laughs> really? If, him, start, if he was dressed like the Joker. I, let me tell you, I yeah. would let him splooge all up in my asshole. 
that's wow. If he was dressed like the Joker, I would let him nut so deep in my ass. And he lost so much weight; he was just all bones. I'd be all bones like him, and I also yeah. could take it to the next level. My nut sacks would be painted like little the noses. <laughs> the little onk, onk, and make the noise too. Two red noses. So my nuts, that onk, 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 right when you touch, yeah. right, it's gonna do the, the whole thing. <laughs> the dick, cum, and bullets. Bullets, oh, bullets I see. with my name on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. The bullets ah. have your name on it. <laughs> No, the bullets have letters in your name, and I shoot them out al- alphabetically. <laughs> you have the control. Yeah, so the so A th- comes first. No. It's gonna be like ah, <laughs> no, 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 the K, right? K. It's gonna be a haklail. Oh uh, yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> the movie was good. You know what? What here's here's the also the thing is, is that he went out of his way to make a movie. He he wanted to do a movie to pay homage. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To Scorsese's earliest films like Mean Streets, you know, ta- you know, um, King of Comedy, whatever, and he took it, it, even the font and the Warner Brothers logo in the beginning was you know that stylistically nostalgic. You know I mean, so it, he made it that way. He wanted to d- see what it would l- be like to see a Joker origin movie in a Scorsese environment. Could you at least appreciate how great of an actor he is? Oh, Lord. Why did you have he to think about it? Uh-oh. I was sold on the trailer and I haven't seen it. I appreciate that he was a gr- is a great actor in the movie, mm-hmm. but I didn't like it didn't move me is the problem. I didn't appreciate it while there, watching the are movie. Are you movable? What moves you? <laughs> oh, God, this guy. Bollywood. Besides Bollywood. <laughs> Besides Bride and Prejudice. You say Bryce. Anything Kurosawa. Bride. Kurosawa moves me. Those there are great. Uh, he's yeah. trying to get good with there Bobby. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sneaky tax. There, I want to say I want to say it with George just a little bit. There is oh. a little acting exercise 101 to some of the things he was doing. What do you mean by that? Like Because a lot. if you go to acting, uh, some acting classes, mm-hmm. you do a thing where it's like, all right, just, you know, feel your gut, right? But... You know, whatever noise comes to mind, and do the body right. So you're, you're on stage going instinctual. Hey, you know, hey, you know, and, and you see you, you have a bunch of acting. All everyone's kids, doing it, yeah, right. And they're all making, you know, what I mean. So there is that aspect of if you film somebody long enough. Okay, well here's someone my- like, well, just let me stop. Let me just stop. Because what you did right now? Yeah, <laughs> let me is just that the same thing as yeah. <laughs> I, okay, here. Was that about, an Oscar performance? How about we recreate a scene? If it's <laughs> acting 101, yeah. I want George to recreate a scene. I want you to recreate a scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what? We will. We'll film it. Yeah. But give us rehearsal time. <laughs> give us a set. Give us a month. Yeah, give us a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lighting. We need the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. But th- other than that, it was great. <laughs> right? What are some of your other things? That's it? Yeah, it was just too slow. There was no enjoyment uh, in it. Like I don't, like I didn't find like the any like. Yeah. I prefer films with a little bit of a joie de vivre, you know, a little bit of like. F- so it was a drag. Funness. Like it, or it wasn't a drag. I honestly thought it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. It's just that you have to go in it expecting no joy, no reprieve, no feeling of victory. Yeah. It's it's a very dark spiraling down of a man. Hmm. If if you expect if you know that going yeah. in, which I did, mm-hmm. I I I got what I what I wanted out of it. It's like in the third uh, Nolan Batman movie where mm-hmm. Bane they take over Gotham. You know, um, Bruce Wayne is in that prison underground in Egypt. I don't know where that fucking thing was, right? Yeah. And imagine yeah. that movie just ending that way. Oh, where Batman isn't even. Succeed. Yeah, he doesn't. He's just he dies in that. Thing, um, Bane takes over. The bomb goes off. Everyone dies, and that's the tone of the Joker. Kind of people don't die in that massive way, but it's just in terms of no reprieve. Mm-hmm. Imagine that happening in that movie, where it's like all yeah, those things and, happen, and then and like, just when you think that there could be one positive thing happening in his life, they rip it right yeah from under you. They're like, nope, you don't get to have that. There is you. You have sympathy toward him. He's a. You really do. So you actually empathize. mentally. Because he's a mentally ill man, right? Who doesn't have a lot of money. He has dreams. He lives with his mother. He's been lied to. He's been lied lot. to his whole life. Abused his whole. He's life. He's also had. He's also had the government just not, you know, be on his side. So he's he's, at the bottom of the barrel. He is a completely society has turned their backs on a guy like this. Yeah. Mm. 
you know, it, it you know, it, what it reminds me of is, you know, sometimes like back in the day when you didn't know Dalia, Chris Dalia, mm -hmm. and Dane Cook would go up on stage. And Dane and Chris have both been on this podcast and I, I'm not not I'm not saying one is funner than the other and vice whatever, but what I'm saying is is that there was a time where Dalia was now But Dalia is I know, but Dane funny, Cook though. I know. But there was a time that Dane Cook, right? was considered to be back in the late 90s early 2000s unfollowable mm. right but then you have guys like Chris Delia who's like no oh you think he's great white guy a white guy who's physical and high energy I can do that too mm -hmm. and he does it and in many ways people think maybe at, in many ways he does it better right he does but that's babe. what he does okay okay <laughs> Dane wants to, what if Dane wants to come back? Sweet don't do guy, that. but I'm just saying. I don't know what you're doing right now. Is... I have no idea what you're doing right now. I don't like it. <laughs> you're taking no part. Listen, Dane, if you're listening, I'm a big fan. I love it. Right? Tourgasm, my favorite. Never saw it. <laughs> Did you see it? But I saw it. I see it on my HBO now, and I'm, I'm about to cl click on it one of these days. <laughs> about but, um, to. Big fan. <laughs> but, um, but so what Joaquin did was, yeah. um, remember when, come on, when Ledger came out? Killed it. They like the New York Times did a front page, not even the entertainment section of like how it's like the, you know, what I mean the next coming of film. You know, what I mean it just, no one can touch Ledger. You know, he then did. he dies. Then that whole folklore gets entangled in. Yeah, and then what? Even Daniel Day Lewis probably goes, Nah, I would never touch that. Yeah, and then create Joaquin Phoenix, crazy, crazy eyes. You know what I mean? He's like, No, I can do it. That's that's a great. I love that kind of and I bet confidence you, and bravery. I bet you he didn't even watch. He's Ledger's he probably never did. Probably He's like, nope, don't need to. I got this. <laughs> I am this. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an amazing. You should see it, dude. It's really good. Do you guys sense the critique? How you guys are saying you can empathize with him? People are complaining like that. Since you can't empathize with him, they're afraid that these incel types or these people would maybe look for the same retribution. Yeah. Um. No. I didn't no, see right? no. him as an incel. I saw him as incels. To me, don't have. Yeah. You, I, they don't represent what he represents. He represents a downtrodden man since since he was a baby who's been fucked over since he was a child and tied to a radiator. Do you know what I mean? Like he never stood a chance against life. He's not an incel. He's somebody who was born in on the wrong side and stayed on the wrong side and, and another never recovered. People's argument that yeah. I'm because I because when I found out about incels and the definition, remember with me they're and my brother an were going through that. Not an incel. I know, but my brother and I were going through that phase where we were like oh, questioning. Could, yeah, we were incels. Remember that, right? <laughs> and what we discovered was is is that we might have been incels, but we kind of corrected our disposition or situation in life yeah. by doing entertainment or whatever you might want to do. To some people work out, some people. You know what I mean? Try other things. You know, I, I think you love your mama. I don't think. Yeah, you never hated women mom. though. <laughs> what? I don't think incels love their moms. I they think that women. they have a weird. You love your mom. You had a good relationship with her. You're yeah, but very... we've. Oh, the, I just the, the the term incel disturbs me because we've always had them. They're not a new phenomenon. No, they were called yeah. nerds <laughs> in the eighties. <laughs> We've had them. There's a very fine distinction now between a nerd and an incel. Please make that clear. What do you mean? I what? love nerds. They're both I think you're a nerd. They're both involuntary celibate, except one just hates women with a passion. Wait, nerds get fucked these days. If you are yeah, not Nerds are all the rage. I, f I love nerds. I think nerds are very sexy. Yeah, but then they're not nerds. They're nerds. No, no. If you think that they're sex, no, no, no. no. Oh, here it is. It's no. just that they're, they're girls not nerds. Like me. They're not nerds. There are girls like me. They're Chad. That find you know little coders and well, little you've guys. Never who, seen, don't guys, say you hunt for little coders. No, that sounds wait, weird. It's a game that they play. Those those ones you're talking about look like Nick Yusuf. They no. drink the fancy coffee. Mm -mm. Just listen. Mm -mm. Pour over. I've seen them. They ride the bikes. Mm, you got the, me wrong. The bikes. <laughs> the right. They, yeah, they have the bikes. They ride everywhere because of the. What do you call them? The um the environment. Oh, I see. They want to help yeah. the environment. No, that's a hipster. What I know, but that's what it is. Nerds are hipsters. Too. I'm not. Ner what you're talking about are hipsters, not nerds. Nerds, you've never seen. I don't think. No, I'm not walking around. <laughs> are you kidding real me? nerds? Your circles are way too cool in high school. Look at my friend. I have a friend named I Mike. I'm not gonna say his last name because he'll he'll either shoot because I think he's gonna shoot up the, uh, the comedy store one day. Oh, okay. But, um, so I'm not gonna say his last name. 
But this guy well, might say very... his last name now if I'm you not, think that he's a threat. He's big. I'm not going to say his last name. But this guy, Mike, everyone knows him at the comedy store. He's a funny guy, right? But this guy is border not just a nerd. He could be incel. But what do you? What defines that for you? Fear. Oh, there, there's something that they do a quiver in their speech, a vibration in their eye, an energy that comes out of their fucking pores. That that my sensibilities, right? It tingles my sensibilities. It tingles your sensibilities. Did I stutter? I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> stop! Stop! Tingle. I don't like your tone either. Yeah, I don't. What's your problem? I'm just an insult trying to make it. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm I'm just, so did you see the... Yeah, I know. Gil, you look like you've lost right weight. I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, look how Why fit he is. Why are you doing this I, yourself? I'm trying to be like Chris D'Elia and be an action movie star. You're not going to be one. Okay, you, thank you Yes, for your you will be. Not, thank not, you. And you get, you get to come to the premiere. Thank you. Uh, okay, ask, if you ask me... I think you could be an action star. I mean, after today at H3, I feel like I'm an action star. <laughs> oh, why? What happened? What happened at H3? Should we pull up a video? Know, and it? <laughs> I feel like I was in Too Fast, Too Furious. What were you thinking, Bobby? What What was going through your mind? If I would have gone through the doorway clean, right, I would have taken out either Ethan, right? Cause I know I couldn't get Ela. <laughs> I Ethan, couldn't. I couldn't have the angle, right? But I could have taken out him or one of his fancy cameras. Well, should we play it just for the I, audience? Yeah, doesn't yeah. Help? yeah, yeah. So yeah. just for reference, everyone. Oh, oh, good timing. Oh, oh, oh. This guy. You can find me at bobbyleelive.com. For more information there, bobbyleelive.com. Oh, great for the audio audience. So, without further ado, Bobby and Kalila, please enter. Yeah, right now. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) That looks so legit hard. Dude, my, my right leg got twisted in a bunch of metal. It did. In I the had doorway. to pry it out. It got it was, lodged between the doorway. We could have died. You could have. Wait, I yeah. want to know for real if you had, you knew that you were going to do this because I wish I would have been warned. I would mm, have prepared my body. Mm. Very interesting. Prepare your body. <laughs> interesting. What does that mean? For impact. My yeah, knees yeah, were out impact. like this. Uh, <laughs> there is no prepare, preparation for impact in showbiz. We do it. You know you're you know why you're right? Why? It's because you know when you get into a car accident, the ones who get hurt more are the ones who tense up. That's what I'm saying. Before impact and the yeah. ones who survive better are the ones who are asleep in the car. Tony Ferguson absorbs <laughs> punches. He oh, gets punches that, yeah. when he gets punched. The reason why he doesn't get hurt is because but this is what they say, the commentary. My friend Joe Rogan and my other friend Michael Bisbee. Mm-hmm. What about the other guys? <laughs> the way you said that. You know, they're my friends. What about Ooh. Dominic Cruz? Never met him. What about John Anik? Never met him. Anywho. Your friends. Any hole. Any he. <laughs> any who. I don't even know what I'm saying now. Anaha. Um, when he gets Tony Ferguson, the reason he... Because what he does is when he gets punched, he, he's his, he moves with the punch. Mm-hmm. So his he absorbs the punch so he doesn't... He doesn't grab all the impact. Mm-hmm. He doesn't take all the impact. He flows with it. That's what I do in car accidents. That's all I'm saying. You f- well, we <laughs> float all right. What? We float real well today. Do you know why I really did Through that? Through that wall. Can I be honest with you? Yeah, what was the... What were you happening? If we get hurt, we don't have to do it. <laughs> oh my God. Were you Bobby. trying to hurt me? No, me. If I hurt myself enough, I would have been like, ah, oh, I can't do it right now. Broke, <laughs> right? And they're like, they're gonna be like, really? And even if it came out on an angle like this, I would even go do something more, even more, more just to pop it out or whatever. I go, look, it's vibrating, whatever. And we would have gone. I really was trying to get out of that, oh, but it turned out to be good. Oh, I love the, Ethan. Uh, that was an easy podcast. Those guys, the, are the, so the nicest great. people in the world. Yeah, podcasting has been uh. Real fun, and um, as of late, and uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have an amazing sponsor to tell you. Blue Apron, Blue Apron, Blue Apron. Hey guys, oh my God! Today, great news. I was pulling up on the driveway, and my favorite box was in my front door. Oh. 
And the b- box is from Blue Apron. And guys, you know when, when I see that box? Yeah. And I read it, I go, I say to myself, oh, fuck, man. That means I'm going to get some good meals in my tummy soon. Ooh. Right, Kalila? This month. Tell me about this. Yeah, give this me the. What I'm cooking for you. Yeah, what you're getting from me. box this month. We're getting mushroom mazamen. <gasps> Love that. Um, zesty gnocchi. Classic. Oh, fuck. Roasted cauliflower and saffron pasta. Never had that before, have you? Nah. Sounds fancy, though, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just ate a blue apron. Yeah. Go ahead. He just ate the idea. <laughs> what else right. is on there? To start making delicious, brag worthy meals at home without the hassle, try. Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get sixty dollars off when you visit blueapron.com slash belly. That's blueapron.com slash belly. Blue Apron, a better, better way, way to, to cook. cook. Quip, 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 quip a fool. You guys, <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. We go back in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, <laughs> we're back in time machine in the seven. Uh, the quip is. The, the toothbrush that I use, do you know why? Why? Because it's like, it, it has, I can only I can only explain it by saying it has future vibrations in my mouth. Oh. It just has, you know you know how a lot of like electric toothbrush, yeah. they vibrate too much where this it swirls mm-hmm. and it feels like it's getting into the little nicks and crani- oh. crannies of the crevices in your mouth. Quip sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes with 30 second pulses ensuring an even clean. Quip automatically delivers brush heads to you every three months for new, clean bristles right on schedule. The sleek, intuitive design is simple to use and comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mirror mount. These (laughs) thoughtful features that make brushing Mm -hmm. something you actually want to do twice every day. Whoa. Whoa. Good habits, man, to live a healthier life. So help from fresh world habits with Quip. Quip, 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 quip a fool. Quip starts at just $25 and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash belly. This is a simple way to support our show. It start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip.com slash belly to get your first refill free. Go right now to getquip.com slash belly. Quip, 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 quip a fool. <laughs> What do you enjoy do, what do you put enjoy the rest of the show. What's the biggest lie you've ever told to get out of something? I got, I've told so many lies. I don't even know, man. The Eric Griffin was the most recent. Which one's that one? Where you told him your uncle died. He did die. A lot. That's not a lie. I don't. Say, I don't say that's a lie. Never reestablished. Oh. It was a true lie. True lie. Yeah, true lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. No, you have no regret over any lies you've told. No. To get Be, out of I'll it. tell you why. Because mm. at the end of the day. In my when I if I, I don't want you know what I also decided I don't want to be cremated. Yeah. I want land. Wait. You want the soil. I want the thing. You want the worms. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want the thing. You know what I mean? What do you mean? You want the bowl? Like I want casket? the casket. I want people to visit once a year. Oh, who do you want? I want to flowers. Hold? What? Who do you want to hold your casket? The four. The people. weakest your ones. Your pallbearers. Little Pikachu. <laughs> so it's lopsided that little kid, yeah, that, just heads hitting. I'm gonna have little Pikachu right yeah. who's the little my brother Pikachu? little Pikachu from San Francisco that little kid Arthur Pikachu, Arthur oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have Steve Arthur um, and some some other weak guy on one side oh, that's cause you want your Eric coffee Coke. to look like it's floating yeah 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 and then I'm gonna have bigger guys <laughs> on one side so it's lopsided like that right and then when they bury me um I want people to visit. I think that's cool to have old school. Because my dad's downstairs in my new place in the box. It's just weird. Yeah, what do you feel? What do you do with it? Just keep it there. I say hi to it, then I go, then I'll correct myself. Mm. Like, I'll see the box with my dad's ashes. And I'll go, good morning, dad. Or hi, dad. Not morning. Hi, dad. Mm. And then I'll go, what the fuck are you doing? To myself. Wow. Do you feel happy when you do it, though? I, you know, I, no, I, when I say it, I really mean... It like as if he is there, mm. but then something kicks in where you're like, he's not there, he's dead, right? And then you correct yourself and you shake your head and you go, what an idiot. Mm. So I'm, I think, is that a stage? I don't even know what I'm, I think people do that. I don't think that's a stage. I think that's just a, you know, a a feeling. It's like when people, <laughs> it's like when people go to a grave and they they talk to their loved ones. Oh yeah, you're, you're talking to the wrong person here because I grew up atheist. 
No, I grew up very Catholic. Oh. So November 1st and 2nd, you know, we had Kalag Kalag. And we would oh, go to that's my favorite. And there's no the school. It's a holidays. national holiday. So we don't have Alagala. school that week. And then we just spend days in the cemetery. And my uncles and aunts, they get really drunk. They bring pancit. And they oh. bring all like the, the um, you know, linataan. They bring everything. So it's like Day of the Dead. Yeah. And then they mm-hmm. just get drunk around the graves and celebrate with dead family members. So I think the good morning thing is fine. It is fine. But you know what? The most important thing is when I wake up in the morning and I look toward my beautiful girlfriend, <laughs> Kalila, my little sweet, and look at her and I go, I might be sleeping next to one of the biggest Filipino concert promoters. <laughs> hey, Bobby, can you explain uh, that? I feel like there's a story about no, I just feel what like you say? I, you concert know promoter. You shouldn't say anything. You shouldn't say anything because we don't even know. We don't know anything. I don't know anything. Concert? I don't even know what you're saying right now. I'm. Why are you saying I'm, concert promoter? Because you Co- look like somebody when I look at you and I go, this is an international concert promoter. You're a piece of shit. And when I actually get this thing done. Yeah. Ooh. When I leave the leg, Whoa. This is what I like. When I lay down that legacy. Lay down your dick, babe. and sh- Let me see the wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> you think Kalala got wrinkles? Yeah, no, that's just a new saying. <laughs> oh, lay down. Write that down. Lay, what was I saying? Lay down the yeah, dick. dick. Lay down there and let me see those wrinkles. wrinkles. Write that down, man. We're making that a shirt. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what happened was the other day she called. Uh, hey, wait. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> no, you're concert promoter. International. This International is not, concert This is, no one is supposed to be privy to this information. Oh, oh, I'm and sorry. And it has My nothing bad. to do with concerts. Whatever. Comedy shows. No, not even. Oh, so it has nothing to do with live shows. At all. What is happening, guys? I'm just, are you trying this to This is what I don't like. Are they're, you around You it? know how we... So usually, we're on point about what we share with other people. <laughs> like, this is something that's still happening, and we haven't seen it I don't know what I'm doing. Yet. Did we I'm reveal sorry. anything too much yet? No, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. that, like, I don't even have the job yet, so just don't right. put it out there. Oh, I just fucked it up. Oh. You're right. I fucked it up. Yeah, imagine, fun, like, though. announcing something. But it was fun <laughs> when I brought it up, though. But yeah. Let's just say that you might get a job at the World Tour. Basically, what it is, is... Can I just say this? This is that. Okay, prep ourselves. Prep everyone. Prep. Is my girlfriend, Kalila Kuhn, you might become like Bill Silva, like her own production company. And she's going to bring beautiful shows out into the Philippines. That's all I'm saying. And I've been wanting to do it. For, I've been wanting to do a, a lot of things. Okay, you know what? Now that you've said it, I, I have to. <laughs> you said it all fucking wrong. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Concert from I'm thinking like you're doing J Lo's concerts yeah, ahead, like Madonna. Go I gotta take this off. Hold on. Now it's getting serious. Now we're getting serious. He, laying down the wrinkles. Now baby. it's fun. The wrinkles are out. The wrinkles are out. One of, one of my the biggest one of my biggest gripes in the Philippines is that they they don't have depth to their entertainment. There's a lot of talent there, but everything is so surface level. Mm-hmm. They regurgitate the same shit over and over, and they use a lot of like pretty faces. Mm-hmm. Mestizo and Mestizo. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of the comedy there, honestly, is unparalleled in how funny it is. It just doesn't have a lot of variety. Filipino comedy, if you, what you see in TV, is is the same shit. It's variety shows and a lot of like drag queens yeah. who are hilarious. They are amazing at their job. I mean, George, we went to a fucking fiesta and that was the funnest night of my life, I think. Yeah. But there just isn't any stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. And because if you really think about it, it's a third world country and this doesn't, they, you know, the regular man doesn't have access to Netflix stand up shows or even mm-hmm. what stand up is about. Mm-hmm. I want to change the comedy landscape there and give Filipinos a chance to create their own Dave Chappelle, their own Bobby Lee, and maybe provide a space, a, provide a platform for them to do that. Because oh, cool. I think that the Philippines is teeming with talent. And so the way he said it, like I'm a fucking concert promoter. I was thinking Vegas. Like, is crazy. Did, but does the Filipino government have a First Amendment? Wait, you guys have amendments here's, like, like here's ours? The thing. They're very Western. You have, you cannot, people still get in trouble. There's this guy named Carlos Eldran. He's a He's an artist and he's very anti-government there. He's gotten in trouble for offending religious groups mm-hmm. and things like that. So there is still that over there. But I don't know what the laws are regarding... Art or comedy as an art, not actually like legal. maybe there is some leeway. With yeah, but, but but what I'm saying is is that but those things are born out of free speech, I think. And oh, so when you have a uh, what I dribbled, yeah. 
so when you have you know that as a as a a mem- like we have right it's one of our top ones right yeah mm-hmm. then art and all that stuff grows out of that idea you know i don't yeah. think that i don't think that that's supported in the philippines speak your mind I think that it's... You're allowed to say whatever you want. But that's why, for me, it's an uphill battle. How do you bring stand-up comedy... You can't. ...into a place where there is... You know, they did it in South Africa. Oh, true. You know, you have Trevor Noah coming out of South Africa. But that, that's he, what but I he want. But anom- he's an anomaly. He's, you know what it, he, Trevor is this. is If you have a kid like you mm-hmm. in the Philippines, because you, you barely have an accent now, right? Mm-hmm. And you're also... To me, you're Filipino. Obviously, you were born and whatnot there, but you've been in America for so long. You just you you, you just embody both places. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But so we might be able to have a have somebody like you come out of there, and so in South Africa it's the same thing. But there's it's not like there's a comedy culture that every year produces. A new voice. You Those mean, are just anomalies, I think. You mean homegrown? Yeah, grown. So, okay. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't exactly, you know, you and I talked about this. You can't exactly take the American model and say, yes, let's create a place like the comedy store where anybody can just show up and, you know, you have everyone from the newest open micer to Dave Chappelle on any given night, mm-hmm. right? How do you apply that to a third world country where they don't even have access to the idea of stand up? So, how can you really fish? the real talent in a place where it's not that that kind of information is not disseminated that kind of entertainment is not disseminated it's not on their tv screens they're completely naive to that idea but i am willing to try and i am willing to see and i am willing to fail and if it all backfires i will have at least given it my all but you know what though when you say that i also think that you if anyone can do what you can i really do believe that because you know, people, if you go to the a comedy club like the Improv, whatever, you know, you go to the cellar in New York, you see promoters and young agents and people that are in the business that are in the outskirts of it, right? Not necessarily stand-ups, yeah. but people that are in the business, right? But young people who are trying to get in, they all kind of hang out at the comedy store or the cellar in New York, right? Mm-hmm. And um, there's a sense of, you know what I mean community, but that's I don't. I, why am I losing my train of thought? What was I even saying? You're saying that you can't cultivate I, that community. I think I'm getting there. retarded. You're not getting, you're not getting retarded. retarded. Am I, I turning retarded? No, no, you're not. I'm not turning it. You no. can't turn that way, <laughs> like a vampire. Yeah. But what are the odds, and how long would it take to cultivate or to change the like comedy landscape in a country t- like you that? You have to cultivate the culture, though. I think that's what it is. It's the culture that needs to change. I'm not. This isn't a one man project, by the way. I'm working with a lot of people who are already in the industry there who have that same. They want that similar change. vision. But oh. what you what you can do is this though, yeah. you, you can bring in mid shows. That's what I. Not Chappelle. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But mid shows. Yeah. You can also create a local environment there. You give people an incentive. Mm-hmm. So you look at a young guy. Who's in the Philippines? He really wants to do stand up. There's not a lot of places to do it. You go, listen, you you know, we're a production company, call it whatever that's called. And you go, you help us promote this and that, you know, what I mean? and we'll give you a 10 minute opening spot mm. in front of Ali Wong or whoever you bring out there, Joe oh, Koi. Okay. So you know what they do? They fucking paper the town. They do everything yeah. they can Free. to get on that show. And then you get those guys to get other people, right? And then that's maybe you can create a thing like because, you know, like the Montreal Comedy Festival, some they go to Houston, they go to Chicago, mm-hmm. and they go to specific A rooms. They have relationships with the improvs or whatnot, right? And they set up these showcases, right? So, um, you know, you might be able to do it. Yeah, and all those things that you just mentioned, I already have written down and considered. So we'll see. It could just be the worst idea. No. I'll invest in uh, Licks Entertainment. <laughs> hey, Bobby came up with, with um, what was it? Licks and the Noodle? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Licks and the Noodle. We were on our way to H3 today. <laughs> I, I, I need somebody to, I really need somebody to do a drawing of Kalila as Licks writing a ramen noodle. Joey. That, that's your like. Joey. What? Joey. 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 Yeah. Joey. Joey. A noodle. Do a kind of a cartoony, you know, anime 
kind of a painting. I'll be really grateful for that. <laughs> if we'll make it a contest, guys, just submit it to us, and we might even making it a shirt for a uh, December. Oh, yeah, a special noodle. edition, like some noodle. Edition. Yeah. All right, I'm done. Um, and uh, we got to think about if we want to do this live. I don't know. What do you mean? I kind of want to take because I just you know going on the road by myself is just like I there would be. <sighs> I was gonna say it, but there, I miss, I miss, I miss the camaraderie. I miss the camaraderie. I miss the camaraderie. How do you say it? Camaraderie. Com- I can't mm-hmm. say it now. Camaraderie. 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 I like the camaraderie, and I like connecting. Yes. You sleep all day. I love it. <laughs> Where you can you connect with it. your dreams. <laughs> You know, the, the 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 you know I've always been that way though. Is that weird? What like being by yourself? No, I just have always been of a sloth. Oh, huh. you know. You know, you're not a sloth because you when you move, your movements move are quick. very fast. Thank you. As as shown today <laughs> on age three, yes. when you want to put the pedal to the metal, yeah, Papa goes. That there. foot no. is heavy. I said this before, and I say it again. I don't have talent. You know what I have? Commitment. I commit. You're also very agile. Thank you. And you have rhino hide for skin because your you. leg was wedged between the wall and the glass that broke on that little uh, motorized thing. Yeah. And you didn't. You didn't have a single scratch on you. <laughs> you yeah. started bleeding. <laughs> he doesn't bleed. I don't bleed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But maybe I'm special. You know. Did Did you guys see the fights? We did. I'm sorry. I know you guys are. Uh, What'd you think? I wasn't expecting a second round. I was kind of shocked how Whitaker was lunging in forward a lot. He he had to do that because of the length. But here's what I want to say. I'm a gigantic Robert Whitaker fan. We know that you know this. Kalila knows this. I'm a gigantic, and I love Adesanya. I I thought it would have been a more competitive battle. Adesanya really opened my eyes to him because the way he ran through him, let's be honest, he ran through him. Yeah. You see the yeah. dance too? Yeah. The Genki Suda. The beginning, to, to, to do a rehearsed dance like so that. So ridiculous. To, to all the, do all the <laughs> theatrics. Not the Genki Suda though. Oh, for sure. He right? Because he's not the first, you know. He's not. Yeah, but that guy is has everything. He has the, the, the dynamic personality. Mm-hmm. He has the color. Yeah. I mean, he has... What the color? The, 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 Why does that matter? It doesn't matter. It's that, You know, people say, like, even when I go to pitch the show with Peter, right? Mm-hmm. They go, the color is relevant. The, when, when Peter, Peter and I are both Korean guys, right? You don't think that... You think 20 years ago I'd be able to go in there with Peter? No. No. It's a color. What does that have anything to do with it? Race. Race. Okay, I just don't <laughs> think it quite applies in the UFC because you've had John Jones, you've had Daniel Cormier. He, I know. He, he, it, I will say this: he has, he's, he has got, a, he's got a bunch of things. I'm not. I just say one. No, thing. but I think he help has, me. No, no. I'll say this: nobody help me. He's like McGregor. He has oh, a like con- a black Conor no. McGregor. He has a country behind him. Yeah, like a a New Zealand. No, well, that and plus Nigeria. Oh, okay. What is it? You always call me out. You know what? You've been so mean to me this week. What Tell did me about I say? that. She's a club what promoter, dude. No, like, <laughs> I'm, I'll just give you an example of like how she's been this week. Give me a top three right? examples. Good morning. You're fat and ugly. Your breath stinks. Back up. I have Back never. Up. You're like, what? <laughs> you Good get- morning, I said. I have never treated you like that's that. That's the vibe I get, though. Okay, but what, but what do you actually It's not word for word. What's the actual word for word? Paraphrase? Yeah, yeah. What? What's the actual intention? Yeah. No, it's Ugh. usually because. Oh, are you alive? Stuff like okay, that. Okay, look, this is. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're in bed, right? Yeah. In the dark. And all you hear is. Okay. Yeah. That was and all he, I, I turn on the lamp. Yeah. And I ask him, <laughs> are you scratching your fun? Are you scratching your feet? Middle or of the your night. foot? Yeah. Middle of the night. It's really, it? really loud. And then he like smells it. And I'm like, can you not do that in bed? No, no. He's like, I'm not scratching my foot. I'm scratching my own hand. So I turn the lights back on. It's a horror film? <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 this is what she says, too. And you leave out the, the craziest part of the story, which is very interesting. You go, you know what you're doing? I go, what? She goes, you're scratching your foot. And the, the something about the pores. 
You know, exploding into the oh, sky. Yeah. <laughs> because when he scratches, you know, like the, the she, little she like. She thinks that I'm exploding little fireworks of fucking fungi yeah, the in the is, sky. Like, <laughs> there's fungus dust that's going that in the air. Oh, I'm inhaling it. Fungus dust. Yeah. You can't have fungus dust. You just fucking like fireworks in the sky. So I go, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, see, he talks to uh, me like that. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes out. I'll now. tell you. Oh, will you? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell what you else? why. What? what else? When you say witchcraft talk, swamp talk, swamp right from the old days, you talk about scraping, fucking, exploding f- amoebas on your f- green foot. Poor explosions. Yeah. It, poor explosions. That's crazy talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you never back me up, man. That's not great. That's not crazy. Yeah, that's crazy Thank talk. You. Thank you. Witchcraft. So anyway, that uh, happened, and um, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> that happened. Our life, you know, our life. You know what it is. Our life. You know what it, our lives. Our lives. Oh, thanks for watching Magnum PI the other day. Bye, guy. By, by the oh, way. you were good in it. She hated it. The Can mustache you stop was great. Saying that. What? You saw that the mustache pull. Who's that actress? I didn't know who that was. The chick. Oh, Purdy. Purdy. She's great. Not only is she great. I don't. You know. I might watch. I'll be honest with you. When I watch the show with her, the Magnum show, I don't know what I'm watching. I don't know the show. I don't watch it. I don't know it. I never saw it from the beginning. I don't. I know who they are. I know generally what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. But I base it on just how I feel about the people, Mm. and they're just. I I love them. They're really nice, and when I'm there, they they it feels like they want me there. That's all I want. I feel like we should record an episode with your new friend. We will. Out there. That's all I want. <laughs> okay. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but we have to share this amazing sponsor with you. Ship, ship, ship. Ship, ship, ship. ship yes, yeah, ship, ship, ship. <laughs> yeah. We love it. That's when you're selling online, everyone, getting your orders can be a real getting pain. Getting your orders out. <laughs> okay. Time consuming, expensive. Yeah. So many carriers to choose from. Mm-hmm. How do you know? Best choice. I don't know. That's why you need ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. We use it for us, our stuff, right? Tiger Belly stuff. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. ShipStation helps you get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. No matter what you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, Mm -hmm. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. ShipStation works with all of the major carriers, including UC- USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment. So you can compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. Yeah, that's why ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. You'll ship more in less time with the best rates available. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code BELLY. There's absolutely no risk, and you can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. Just visit uh, visit ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in BELLY. That's ShipStation.com, then enter the offer code BELLY. ShipStation.com. Make, Make ship, ship happen. happen. 23 and me. Learn, learn about your history. history. Uh, I used 23 and me. I sent in my kit and I had lovely, lovely information that I now have in Such my as? knowledge brain. Um, that my physical. What? Your Olympic. That I'm 10% oh. Japanese. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have Olympic style physical attributes. Mm hmm. Elite power is, athlete. I'm an elite power athlete, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you? What did they find out about you? That I'm 70 different things. Yeah. We don't from like 70 different parts of the country or the world. <laughs> She's a Jew? I'm oh, 1% yes. Ashkenazi, 1% yes. So are you French? Yeah, mostly on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's French and German. What did you find out about yourself when you did it, Gilbert? It just said Stonehenge. <laughs> did, are, are you being real? <laughs> did, did it say Stonehenge? Yeah. I think it actually said 100% Filipino. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay. Which is kind of weird, because what does that even mean? Well, they, don't they say don't like- mean Easter Island? Wow, there it is. Come on, man. Got me Come really on, good man. with that. Man. Come on. Got that, that right there. Sense. Go ahead. Man. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Oh, I don't know. The negativity. We love 23 me. Tell them about it. 23 me. Shut up, man. Okay, 23 me. Go we ahead. love this thing, George. <laughs> All of this is included in 23andMe's new Ancestry and Trade Service. And it's $79 for a limited time only. Order your Ancestry Trade Service at 23andMe.com slash Tiger Belly. That's the number 23andMe.com slash Tiger Belly. Everyone, enjoy the rest of the show. Well, you know what? I think we should grill George. Uh-oh. He's about on the what? hot seat. Did he do something bad? What? About what? No, I just think that we should ask him about his life. Oh. <laughs> I think that we give our lives, we give away so much of our lives. Mm-hmm. 
and I think it's your turn. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. This morning, I saw somebody, go, oh, an old lady, get attacked by a dog, but I missed it. What do you mean? How did you see it and miss, miss it at it. the same time? Okay, I was at uh, going to work out. <laughs> I parked on like this little... Uh, Nick the Air? Yeah, little side street in uh, Pasadena. I was like, oh, shit, I need to like send a, send a thumbnail for Hey Bitch. So I looked down on my phone. I look up. There's a lady walking her car, dog. Then I look down. Then I look up and some old guy's like running across the street. And then I look down and then I'm like... I hear people yelling, and this old lady had been talked by, uh, attacked by a, uh, a German shepherd, but it was all behind a fence, so I missed like seeing the whole thing. She had her own dog, too? Yeah, I think she had a little dog. Oh, so it's probably the So she was dog walking, yeah, attack. walking a little dog, and the German shepherd, just loose German shepherd, mm. but attacked her. Wait, do you have to put your dog down if it bites another dog? I don't think you're, you're like, mm. I think you might get pressure, but I don't think that anyone can force you to. I think... I think so. Great story. If that if that German mm-hmm. shepherd is astray and ends up in the city, they'll put him down. I but mean, if it's someone's like personal family think, dog, I'm not sure. You should write a script we based should. on that story. Actually, well, that'd be a fun contest. If based on that, and use that as your opening scene. Someone to write Real a 25 story. minute pilot. Wow. And what else, George? What else? How's your body doing with you, all the working out? Question: that you Do you think he doing? looks slimmer? I actually think he looks slimmer because he I took his shirt off, right. and I thought he actually looks kind of. Compact. Let me see your pudge. Hmm? Do you have a pudge? Uh-oh. I'm doing okay, I think. I think having a lady helps with the, with the body, keeping it tight. Let me see. Look at that, it's flat. Yeah. Oh, you it's look better ba- now not bad. than you did in the Philippines. I remember one time your sister was like, she asked me, she was like, yo, George, George been eating? <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago. You look great now. That's exactly how no, my I'm sister a little, would ask, she, too. She doesn't go like, did he get Here's what I ask about you, George, is because uh, yes, Bob? the other day, these two guys have been hanging out at the store. They want me to... We'll talk about it later, but they want me to promote what are their products. Mm-hmm. So I just got to the point where I was just, you know what, just, you're just going to have to just call George Kimmel. And they were like, oh, do we have to talk, talk to him? What? I go, what? I mean, yeah, I mean, we're going to you, like you're the guy, you know what I mean? The sort, we just, we don't want to complicate. He's the nicest guy. Yeah. And I know, but he's hard, we heard. Good. It's hard to talk As to. As he should be. Oh, I see. And I go... We're, we're, he's not hard to talk to. George just is this? like, you know, he's able to say yes and no very well. I think people are just jealous of him. Or, or, or he acts a certain way in here and out there he pulls some sort of fucking bullshit Hollywood fucking no. weight. I'll tell you right now that I am I am part anytime he he has dealings with a company, yeah. I'm in that email chain and I know how he responds to companies and when he feels like they're not giving us what we deserve, mm-hmm. he is a boss. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm telling you now that George Kimmel is a professional of all professionals and that's why I love him. That's dearly. not what I'm saying. I mean, is George Kimmel doing a good job? Yes. Does he work hard? Yes. Is he a bright guy for whatever we're doing here? Kills it. He suffice. Suffice. <laughs> okay, I think whatever. he kills it. He but... kills it. He's kill. He kills it. Okay. You kill it, George. You kill it. You really do. Mm-hmm. Okay. But um, I also think that you treat and talk to people with a little weight. That's all. Talk? I think that I think that you like to go to certain places to get recognized. He's just Echo Park. I think you do. I think oh, you, oh, I, yeah, I think you think head? I like he's, to go to places? He's learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From you. He's taking a page right out of your book. West Covina well, Mall? Ring a bell? Yeah, 30 years ago. <laughs> so he's younger than you? Okay. All right. But treat people nice. That's all I'm saying. You got to treat people <laughs> who, nice. Who's been talking to you? What are you talking about? I've been hearing something. Who? Who? Give me a name. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Five, five, five people. <laughs> Wait, fans? No. Separate, no, business. No way. It's yeah, not yeah. possible. I'm on to you, dude. I'm writing, I'm writing names businesses. down. Five businesses. I'm writing names down. He just pulled that out of his ass, George. Unless he has birdies watching. Okay. No, I, 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 up on I, I, baby, how about this, right? You know what I, I pulled? Yeah, I pulled that out of my ass, but you know what I have also on my ass? <laughs> 50 other names. Okay. Uh, Real names or fake names? Fake names. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to Will Hopper Device. Oh, uh, you want to go to <laughs> Will Call Device? <laughs> yeah, whatever it's called. Will Call Device. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Will Call Device. Collide. Will Call Device. Let's what go. What does that mean? I don't know why. It went right know. over my head. Will Call Device. I don't know what it's called. Okay. Unhelpful Advice. Okay, here we go. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Will Call Device. Will Call Device. That'll be this week. Will Call okay. Device. Hi, TB gang. Fan over a year now, religiously watched everything Bobby related. I am currently a junior in college. 
Freshman year, I got paired with a roommate who seemed to be my doppelganger. We both love weed, comedy, nature, and etc. We quickly became best friends, and he even introduced me to Tiger Belly. Over the first year, I started to notice we had a different moral code. When he drank, he would go wild and overall seemed to have less respect for people than I did. At the end of the year, he got investigated for sexual assault, but it came back negative. Sophomore year, he again got in trouble for attempting to stop his girlfriend from leaving a concert. She wanted to handle it on her own, but people saw, intervened, and told the school. I told him this was his last chance, and we left for the summer. I got a call a month ago while he was on acid, and he beat up his younger sister and mom. They called the cops on him, and he is currently still in jail waiting a trial. His GF wants to stay with him because she thinks she can change him. Mm. I don't know if he'll be coming back to school, but this put me in an uncomfortable position, choosing friendship over moral values. Mm. I don't plan on being friends, but any advice would be unhelpful. Moral Tar- val- Tar- moral values is the number one thing. Charlie. Yeah, dump that messy yeah, bastard. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, even back in the day when even, because I can only refer it to comedy because that's all I know, mm. is, is that even back in the day when assholes and shitheads ran the business you could mm. you could threaten people with like taking their career away about sexual you know all, all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff mm-hmm. but you know it, it this, the, the country and the world is woke you, we're too connected mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's you can't behave like that anymore yeah but even if it like first when you read the email i thought maybe it was like a one off oh he got drunk and he got Three things, you know yeah. things with but he beat up his mom and his sister on acid He's that's not even shit. alcohol yeah like you fucking you don't beat people up on acid it's about being good to people and helping your. Fe- we're all connected and we're all we help each other. And this is a piece of shit guy. Yeah, and also you're a junior in college. You're so young. Yeah. This isn't a lifelong friend. This is somebody you, you uh, just yeah. met. You have no ties be- beyond maybe a few good memories and a few similarities. I would run the opposite direction. That guy is messy. And where does this guy live? This uh, kid. It doesn't say. I want this kid to um. Wherever I'm playing, kid. Oh. If I'm playing, come to the show. Come up to me. Let's do a code word. Oh, also. <laughs> you're going to say the podcast? Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, you're going to say to me, medium, medium you, medium you, how? <laughs> I think I know what he should say. What? Show me that dick. Show, show me, no, lay that dick down. That show me dick you can't down. say that because that'll be misconstrued. And the, even George has a pink dick. <laughs> He's out of hand. Security might on stage. Oh, really? Now it's ridiculous. People scream, George is a pink thing. I can't do Still it. Still to this day? Yeah, yeah. Just give this guy a code word that he can give me. Okay, I'll email him. No, no, what is it? Let's say it now. Deviled uh, egg. Deviled egg. Deviled egg. That you come up to me and say deviled egg, and then you can come into the green room, and we can hang out. And I can guarantee you that Bobby's going to have a really confused look on his face because he doesn't remember anything he says. Nope. And he's going to be like, why did you say that? Nope. Also, I, I thought that, um, you know, when he... Um, talked about this kid being his doppelganger being everything like him you Mm -hmm. don't want friends exactly like you you want to keep friends around you who are so starkly different from you who have yeah similar moral code that's like a big foundational thing for friendship but what you like and dislike i think it's Mm -hmm. it's healthy to have an array or a variety of people with completely a set of thinking than you completely different thinking than you Mm. i I don't like hanging out with people. I thought you liked camaraderie. I no, I don't think at the end of the day, I don't think I do. Oh. No, he doesn't. He's a he's a loner. He's a he's I think a, I'm a loner. Makes me sad. If it makes you sad, then you're not a true loner. Because a true loner enjoys the solace, right? No, I oh. enjoy the solace. It just makes me sad. Not the fact that I'm that way. Solitude, I mean. That's what I meant. Not solace. Quantum of solace. Yeah, but solitude. It just it makes me sad that I'm not like normal people, but I like being the way I like being alone. Do you feel drained around people? No, but it's, I'm constantly thinking. Don't say that. Say that. Say that. No, don't say. That. Don't tell that story. You told that story before. Oh, you fucked it up. This is what your mind. What I'm thinking. Yeah. You fucking ass. You fucking cucks. Don't ever come to this place again. You don't know. That's what's going in my head. All those thoughts, dude. You just want like Warner Brothers to hear this. You could be the next Joker. Yeah, I think so. Because it's a one-off movie, so they're gonna be looking for the next. <laughs> You fuck, I know what you're Joker? doing. Yeah, I, I think no. You think I'm acting crazy right now? Asian Joker, babe. But like the way you're doing it, if you did it in the mirror, yeah. lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty thank you. We talked about fuck, this. I'm like, would, yeah. you, would you be able to lose fifty two pounds the way Joaquin Phoenix did? How did he do it? Just starve? She 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 seems to think that if like a movie like that came along, right? 
like Warner Brothers said, said I I was the main villain of a movie of a major movie. You have to lose fifty pounds. I'll do it unless it kills me, but I will get closest to that weight that I can. I'll be I'll do it. I have a proposal. What? In three months, could you lose fifty pounds? But we will offer you. How would you something that you can't get from us that we would be like no, but we'll have to say yes if you can lose fifty pounds in three months. Fifteen pounds or 50? fifty? But fifty 50. is unhealthy. He would that would make him. That's the challenge. If he wants pounds. me to suck his dick, it better be fifty pounds. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait. That that would make me say I'm one seventy five. Oh wait, that is one twenty five. There's not. There's much. no way. Could you? You know what? The one thirty five. Right, no, it's like a UFC fighter cutting weight. No, I could do maybe one forty. One forty. How many pounds is that? That would still be fifty. 30 pounds still. I don't know if I would like Three him months. that light because I'm much taller than him. So I I, I would ma- I would even look just massive next to him. 30 pounds. It's more about you, not his It's health. really all about me. <laughs> I, I I like him not obese, but I do like him a little chunk, chunky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like chunko. Chunko, chunko, chunko. What bye, other bye. question do we have, Gil? We have one more. Uh, hey there, Captain and gang. My husband and I have a sketchy past with addiction, hard drugs, and other devious acts that tend to follow suit. We have since grown up and cut that shit out, both being sober and non-impulsive for years now. We have a daughter who is nine months and another little one on the way. My question is, when they are older and start wanting to experiment, should we be honest with our kids about our past or we should let that shit die with us? We both wouldn't want to go into detail, just let them know we've been down there, but we don't want them to look at us and convince themselves it can't be that bad if mom and dad turned out okay. Thanks for your help. Interesting. I mean, the honest answer is, is that if your kids are relatively young, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, we're going to be dealing with problems that are are going to be beyond our even... Oh, future stuff. Yeah, I mean, imagine the things that we would be dealing with in the next 15 fucking years. Let's end it on a better note. Yeah. Okay. What was that poop thing you were talking about earlier? What poop thing? You said we can talk about poop. <gasps> Oh, so there, eh, it's just the same old, same old incidents we have at home because we have six animals. But oh, um, okay. just Bobby, you know, Julio had same thing. I say, don't feed him that. That gives him diarrhea. Mm. What does he do? He feeds Julio that. Julio has explosive diarrhea at five in the morning <laughs> inside our bedroom. The whole place oh. smells like poo. He's the first to wake up from the smell because I, I have a cold, it. so I can't really smell that well. Yeah. And instead of just saying... It's, this is what I do usually. If I wake up and I smell poo, I, I quietly, I walk in the dark, get paper towel. I just quietly do the job, toss oh, like, it away, don't wake him up. Like a ninja. Right. Yeah. It's just a whole Broadway production with him. He thinks now that he's Cinderella and I he, he's scrubbing floors in the basement. That's how he acts. Like with <laughs> the of, mice and Gus Gus. and kind of love that. You know, like it's it's a <laughs> whole go, thing go, go, where he's okay. like, and then he I, you know, I, I am tired. Quiet in the house. I'm tired of sitting here and you fucking. <laughs> he's short of pulling out a tambourine and just playing. <laughs> I, I, if he started tonight. cleaning with a tambourine, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I fall asleep, mm-hmm. all right? I wake up to shit. Not a slight smell of shit. Large smells of shit. Mm. I wake up, I look on the ground. I don't see any shit near us. We don't have any furniture. We only have the bed in there and the bed frame. There's plenty of, no, no, there's nothing in there. Mm-hmm. So I look, there's nothing. I go back to sleep. I, then I wake up and now I smell something. I go around the corner. It's not just shit, Okay. Do you ever see Close Encounters of the First Kind? <laughs> Third kind, I mean, right? When he was making that mound, right, that in thing. his living room. Jesus. That's what it looked like. It was something that we, her and I have never seen before. It was gigantic. And so, I, and now waking up, five in the morning, it's dark, you're tired, you don't know what time it is, it smells, then you have to clean it. It's a, yeah, okay, yeah, I did get upset. All right? Sorry. Anyways, Julio Poo would... Three- <laughs> You're right, Broadway production. <laughs> three more times after that. Three more times after that, he had explosive diarrhea and he slept through the whole thing because I quietly, th- after that, I just quietly did the job, threw it away, and didn't make a fuss. Link's, inter- Link's Entertainment, oh, baby. No. Right there. Link's Entertainment. My jaws hurt. I don't care. I don't want to open mouth it, is what I'm saying. Close your mouth then. Yeah. Close your eyes. Dear Lila, God, can you re- can you re- make me a bird <laughs> so I can right. fly far, well, far, far away. Dear God, make me a bird. <laughs> what did you do, lick her or bite her? Yuck. 
Anyway, what a great, what a great podcast. Another we learned a lot. Oh, we learned so much. <laughs> oh, um, remind everybody to watch, watch um, H3, H3 podcast H3. that we it's did. It's out right now, actually. It's out right now. No. Watch it. Thanks for listening. I love you guys. Good night. We'll be right back, guys, with some housekeeping. Hey, everyone. We are back. The old crew. We haven't done one of these in a while. Three of us hanging do, out here. Do you guys get cystic pimples? Uh, I do a lot. You don't. I don't know what that means. No, I oh do from uh, ingrown hairs. Bastard. Ingrown hairs. Really? Well, maybe yeah. I get them, but I don't know what it means. The cystic pimples are the ones that are so deep mm-hmm. and very painful, uh, and they don't necessarily have an exit, so you can't just like go into a mirror and pop lately. them. I feel them in my butt lots of times. Oh, really? I, I get butt of, pimples sometimes yeah. too. It depends. I just squeeze really hard, and it hurts so much. But sometimes it just breaks through the skin and bloods everywhere. Oh, do you ever get it where it um it's such like so much pressure that it just like. Pro- Pels itself into the mirror. Oh, I've done it where I oh, actually aimed sure. at the mirror because I was trying to see where it was, and yeah. you know, yeah. and it shot, it shot, uh, oh, but it shot at the mirror. Is there a better feeling in life, though? It feels great, but so painful. It's painful only during, but once it's out, the relief of that, yeah, pressure being gone. Wow, George, get into it, please. You guys uh, are. Do you pop pimples? Is, is, oh, does it excite sure. you on other people? No, not on other people. Oh, well, then but you're I'm, not. You don't a, have a you're grand, not a, You need a Lola so well, you can pop all Nobody's asked me to, you know. Maybe I would you, if I Are you okay with other people popping your pimples? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. If you ever have a good one, you know, you know, you can always call uh, me, not, guys. He usually, not he usually calls Bryce. I'm into blackheads, really. I, I'm not really into um, juicy um, pimples. <laughs> juicy. But if you have a, a blackhead, I have my Dr. Pimple Popper um, extractor. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a good tool, and I have a lot of fun with it. And I get pimples that you didn't even know were there. So hit me up. Or anybody. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anybody, and holiday you guys. Yeah. What you looking get for? Really good Nothing. Ones. Guys, we'd like to thank our sponsors for helping us keep the show going. Uh, Blue Apron, Quip, Ship Station, 23 and Me. To start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home and get $60 off, visit blueapron.com slash belly. Start bu- brushing better with Quip. Quip just starts at $25, and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash belly. If you're selling online, you need ShipStation. Right now, Tiger Blade listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code belly. Ship, 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 ship station. Get the best DNA kit on the market or your ancestry trade service for just $79 at 23andMe.com slash Tiger Belly and find out if you also have 79 races in your body like Kalila. Guys, get your tickets to see the Slept King live. Bobby wants your camaraderie, so go to Oxnard, California, October 11th through 13th. I'm going to try to go to one of those. This weekend. Already? Wow. Yeah. Probably Saturday. San Antonio, Texas, October 18th through 20. Arlington, Virginia, November 1st through 2nd. And Brea, California. I'll probably go to that. November 22nd through 24th. Are there any other dates that uh, we should know about? Or should they just visit the website? Wait, are we going to plug this? Um, are we going to plug this we, up front? We already did plug it up front. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah in that case, <laughs> Great. a few actually. Also, a yeah, few. <laughs> also the extra ones that we plugged up front. Yeah. What I meant to say was um, a few more dates have been added, so but haven't been updated on, on his site, but it will be by the time this comes out. Well, we'll see if I have time tomorrow. Well, guys, we'll see. We'll see. You know what we will see is what George is wearing right now if you're watching the video. Oh, yeah. And what Kyle is holding on her strong athletic legs from her swimming days. Boom. You guys remember that shirt? Me walking down the street being so good to me, the long sleeve? Oh, we heard all you folks from the tropical islands and Australia saying, why the fuck would you sell a long sleeve shirt? It's never cold in Australia. Guess of what? Of course it is. Well, they yelled at me. Okay, I got physically okay, attacked someone, that's online. That's like saying it's never cold in the United States. They have different climb, climb. I'm just there. talking about people from Melbourne. Melbourne is very unpredictable. Even in the summer, randomly, you'll get some weird, like, cold gust of winds. Right well, Kalala, I'm trying to speak to the people that demanded the short sleeve shirts. Okay? All I'm saying is it definitely gets <laughs> uh, cold in Melbourne. everybody in the Bahamas, we have Bahamas, there we go. For everybody. all you fans in the Bahamas. Or, Are we number one in the Bahamas? I doubt it. I hope oh. so. Let's, uh, That's probably we'll Theo. <laughs> That's probably Theo. <laughs> it's probably this past. Oh, no, man. no, but... Uh, guys, check out Thomas our shirts yet. here. The new backs. They're I actually, really like that. Uh, Ugh, these are so cute. They're remix versions of the long sleeve, except they're short sleeve. We have navy blue and Clala. How? What would you consider that color? Uh, periwinkle. 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 We got fun designs in the back. These will be limited because we don't feel like printing them again. So make sure you grab one or two, or this other secret item that's coming next week that we'll show you about. Wait, which uh, one? What is it? Oh, I think that, it might be a that, hoodie, George. That, it might be a hoodie. Uh, 
This Maybe heard. Ooh. Well, I'll show you laughter. Uh, so, guys, save up your money and get ready to get some merch because you guys have been bugging me online about it. Uh, any shout outs? Shout ins? Uh, any look? Anyone looking for investors for a concert promotion company? Oh, Kalila, <laughs> you looking for? Do you see how his description of it was? That was like, so confusing, and I'm watching you be like, "What are you? What are you doing right he now?" He said concert promoter, and in my head, I was like, "I'm gonna see what I can do, like yeah. change a movement." Yeah, I was like, "What is she?" It's like, no. Like, are you repping Green Day? Like, what? I know. <laughs> what is he talking about? That's so weird. George, do you have any shout outs from all the people that see you in Echo Park? Um, not lately. Just wait. Who's uh, whoever uh on oh, Reddit shit. told me also was going to be in town. Uh, thanks to you. I think I thanked you online, but uh, thanks to the Reddit for uh keeping me up to date. Oh. Uh, Asa's going to be on. Shall we let him know the we're going to have a bonus episode coming Ooh. out? I think on uh, Sunday. Get yeah, she's hosting the Pornhub Awards. Oh, really? So tune into that too, because I went to it last year mm-hmm. when Kanye um curated the the whole thing basically and dressed all he dressed women. everyone in his clothes right yeah. yeah and um but asa hosted that one and she did a great job boom so guys if you're in la go to the Pornhub awards uh oh that's the same time when you got crunk with celebrities no you and jenna i just got Cafe drunk Blue? with dumbfounded and Cafe rex dizzy <laughs> boom celebrities uh guys thank you for listening to Shout out to rex dizzy yeah rex dizzy Thank you for listening to our show. Um, get your questions answered at Tiger Belly by emailing us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for interesting, unusual, non typical problems, and we need your help as much as you want ours. So that's adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. You can find everything Tiger Belly on Instagram at Tiger Belly, on Twitter at the Tiger Belly. And Kalila, where can we um, follow you in your life? Oh, you can follow Bobby and I's um, historic <laughs> crash at Calamity K. <laughs> And George, where can we follow Bryce? George underscore Kimmel. I'll have more Bryce. Uh, and Bryce is at microfish underscore B money. Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. So is he still into microfish? <laughs> uh, Probably. We've been busy a bit. I don't think he's been. Uh, he's still got the website. He's still like, oh, we uh, we dropped from number one to number three on the search results or something. I th- I fully support that, by the way, because the types of fish that he fishes, you can eat those, right? Are the ones that don't have that much of an impact on the overall like health. Of- mm the ocean Mm -hmm. like you know like you do need to be eating sardines you don't Mm. always need to be eating tuna Lego get some Lego in your body Lego am I saying oh god I thought you were going to correct me it's Lego (laughs) oh fuck I messed up again oh what's that Manong oh my god this guy did you call him Manong he's been calling me that since I've walked in here yeah but if you're going to say it you got to say it say with the the twang try it one more time Manong 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 but he's not your Manong Cause you're older than him. You're his manong. Hey, I just uh, you know, overheard it one day and uh, thought it ca- it caught on. Okay. He was uh, my sister was talking to me. Yeah. And George did the whole leg kicky thing. He's like, Fong, what's that over there? What'd you call your brother? And then I finally changed his name in my phone from Foreskin. Oh, after wow. After knowing it for how long? Should have kept it, man. That's OG, bro. That's OG. I uh, hope you keep your foreskin forever. I will. I will. I am not a. I Hasidic hope you resist. Jew. Uh, guys. Thank you so much for listening to our show. Make sure you get everything, ticket information, and anything from Bobby Lee at BobbyLeeLive.com or his Instagram at Bobby Lee Live. Have a nice day. Namaste.